afternoon listeners we are back again talking on the series synergy in marriage that collaboration and we've got the foundational scripture in Amos 3 3 that says that how can two people walk together if not by agreement and today we would like to just get into that agreement facet as well uh, due to the wonderful relationship called marriage but I would like to give my wife the opportunity just to say hi and what the topic is that we're going to discuss today. Hi everyone, so yeah, we were talking about difficult um, situations that arise where a couple have to decide whether they have to both make a specific decision on a certain thing or how do they navigate it. And it's also so wonderful to know that it doesn't matter what topic we face in life, the answers are always in the Bible. And today specifically we're going to look at two very interesting topics. The one is baptism and the other one is baby dedication. So I hope you enjoy our episode today. Yeah, so these are two very important aspects that we need to touch on today because uh, you as a married couple need to be in agreement in those areas. So I'm going to once again give my wife the opportunity to read the scriptures um, that she has prepared. So we're looking at Luke 3 verse 21 and 22. So when all the people were baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. And it is so interesting looking at this verse that Jesus didn't feel it is just the people that needed to be baptized. He wanted to be baptized as well. And I distinctly remember that John was very surprised that Jesus wanted to be baptized. Um, and everybody was awaiting his coming and here was Jesus uh, walking towards him and he asked that he be baptized as well. So it has to say if Jesus does something, everything that God and that Jesus does it has a purpose. There's not a single thing that is without purpose. And when they mention it in the Bible, especially in the four Gospels, and all of them mention this, that it is important when we look at Jesus being baptized and the fact that people get baptized when they accept Jesus into their lives. Yes, it's a very important in terms of being immersed into and I think that is also uh, looking at the five different baptisms because we're going to talk about baptisms and then baby dedication. Uh, first and foremost is to baptize into the person of Jesus Christ because he went ahead. Uh, John said, there's the Lamb of God uh, when he saw him. So he recognized him. Mm -hmm. And the Lamb of God said that he need to go through um, certain things and you know, show the example and uh, he allowed John to baptize him because it's a laying down of his life. So there, first and foremost, he showed that he's laying down his life for the people. And then the Bible is clear that we have to lay down our lives also in marriage for one another because it's not about me, myself and I anymore. I'm laying my life down for my partner. Yeah, very true. And and it's coming back again to the fact that Jesus um, is the looking at the church as his bride. And that that relationship that he has with his bride and the church is so incredibly important to him that he died for his church. I mean, that is true sacrifice in the, in the fullest sense of the word. And the fact that he came to earth with that purpose, that he will lay down his life for us. And he was, he was um, obedient to that purpose right to the end, even though at the end he was not, um, he, was, he, he was scared and a little um, sweet blood in the garden of Gethsemane, but he still went through because he, he said, not my will, but your will, God. So mm -hmm. it just shows you that that is to the extent that Jesus loved the church and that he will literally do anything for the church. And what is wonderful with his example of the way that he lived and the ultimate sacrifice that he gave 
is that nothing was too much for him. That he never complained. He never um, went on a tantrum and said, I just can't do this anymore like we will do in our, uh, in our flesh. Um, but he was always in conversation with God about it. He was also seeking God's face in it. He was also always seeking God's will in it. And I think that is where the comparison for me lies in terms of marriages. Do we really look at our marriages in the same way? Is our engagement to, with our partners in such a way that we are respectful, that we are tender, that we are forgiving, that we are patient? Because at the end of the day, it is also pulling through the fruit of the Spirit, which is peace, love, joy, goodness, kindness, gentleness, forbearance, and patience, that we, and self-control, that we, that we also, when we, I always say this, and it's even more prevalent for me the, the last few months, is that relationships are a reflection on ourselves and not on the person, or the other person. Are we blaming? Are we accusing? Are we, where are we? Are we, are we kind? Uh, are we good? Are we joyful? Do we have a good attitude? Um, those things are all the things that that makes a difference at the end of the day. It doesn't matter. We we put on this facade on the outside, and everything is on the outside. It looks fine, but when you look at the the the, the crux of the relationship, where do you find yourself? And, and looking again at, at the example that Jesus um, gave to us in his own life, he never said, you must do this. He also le always led by example. He, he led by what he did himself and not what he was just merely saying. And um, what I find very interesting with the parables as well, for, especially the first one, um, that he talks about the, the sower and the, all the different grounds that you can um, that the seed can fall, that it is so easy for us to be trapped um, in thinking that we are in a good place, but we actually are not in such a good place. And um, yeah, so we have got a, we personally have a responsibility to, to, to take um, stock of ourselves and see where are we, how are we doing, how are we, are we living in the example that Jesus gave us. And when we get baptized, and that is why baptism is so important, is we lay down that old person. We lay down that person that blame. We lay down that person that accused. We lay down that person that are aggressive. So it's a dying to self. Yes, absolutely. Um, so it's very important to think about, you know, we, we are in that example that Jesus came to teach, he, he didn't just say it, he did it. Yeah. He showed it. He showed up and he showed how it needs to be done. And that, that was a preparation of the, the earthly walk that he had. And I think it's so wonderful that we can also follow in his footsteps. So we would like to invite you to go and study the Word of God, get into it, get a concordance, speak to someone, um, in regards to a church, uh, an elder, a deacon, or one of your leaders, however it may be, your pastor, your minister, to just tap into this truth that why Jesus was baptized is because he went ahead, he, he foreshadowed, you know, what he's going to do, laying down, um, as you rightfully said, his life for us. It's always about the other person. So in marriage, it's always about the other person laying down your life, being in agreement about everything, being open and honest and say, listen, let's do this. Or what do you think? Always pulling that person into your world because now there's one world and it's called marriage. So in the five baptisms, we first and foremost get baptized into the person of Jesus Christ, then into the power of the Holy Spirit. He enables us in order to journey on this world. Then it's the purification, His fire that needs to purify us. 
and sometimes it's so hurtful because you have to you know uh, let go of that certain aspect in your life and say it's not about me myself and I anymore it's about others it's about my partner it's about my children uh, not my comfort but the love for my children laying it down so I have to be purified renewed in my mind and then it is to be baptized into the people of God the body of Christ and then lastly the fifth one is to be baptized into persecution because he says, um, you know, we as we lay down our life, we are going to go through persecution. So we are going to suffer in this world. We are going to have trouble in this world, but we're not suffering for nothing. We are en enduring the suffering that you're going through, the loss of someone, the loss of a child, the loss of a, a family member. It is to endure that through the power of, of Holy Spirit because that is life and that is where we are and uh, so we have to lay down our lives so that the, the, the man the woman inside is like seed like you rightfully said that we can sow it into our family sow it into our public spaces and places where we serve others because in laying down our life we say here we are we are ready to serve serve in marriage going through all the trials and the tribulations but also the joys and the, the the love in order to be obedient to the word of god yeah and i think what is also important is uh, when you look at the second parable where um this the, um, the farmer has got this land and he just sowed his wheat w h e a t and the enemy comes and it um, sows the the weed weed double e d between the wheat and the wheat weed comes up with the wheat. You know, it's so easy for us to be so engulfed in this weed, trying to overtake our lives. That you know, when you look at the parable, that weed is supposed to get burned at the end of of its maturity, and when we put so much focus on all the weed with a D in our lives. It distracts us from what we are supposed to focus on. And we must identify what that weed is. And it is from that weed and that circumstances and that bad friends and that bad influences and that bad situations. I mean, Eve got herself into trouble because she was at the wrong place with the wrong people. And that is why she got sucked in with, with the devil and what he was saying. So when you find yourself in the wrong place with the wrong people, you have to ask yourself, what am I going to do about this? And that is from these things, from bad people, from bad situations, bad places, bad um, decisions. Like, am I drinking too much? Am I, 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 I watched that very sad story about... Um, Whitney Houston um, Friday night and just amazing that such a talented beautiful young lady uh, that was so amazingly gifted I mean drugs just took over her life completely and how it literally actually cost her life at the end of the day died at the age of 48 lost her daughter at the age of 22 when her daughter was 22 years old it's all so sad and it's so unnecessary if you really think about it and um, yeah so we have to look at our lives and see ask ourselves what are we busy with what are those things that we need to be purified from like you said that we can go forward in our lives and live a life that that makes sense that has purpose and it's not about you know a lot of people mistake kindness for 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 being weak but you know Miles Morrow also says it's we can't be soft we have to stand up for what we believe so the Bible is very clear about uh, being gentle, and I think that is what Jesus did, uh, but he was, you know, obedient to the Father. Mm. So it's all about being obedient to follow in his footsteps, as we're talking about this collaboration in marriage. It's to come into agreement, to say, you know, you come from different faith um, aspects as well, and maybe the... Uh, one partner comes from a reformed background and the other one from a Pentecostal background. So in the end, we have to decide as a couple that in marriage that we lie down our lives for one another and say, I love you so much that I love God more. What does his word say in that regard? So we have to 
come to that place of agreement because even as we said right from the beginning we talk about baptism and baby dedication mm. so those are and we don't want to get into the theological um, issues that many churches are sitting with today we are just merely merely opening up the word and say um, let's follow the example of Jesus as he was baptized he teaches and say and even the apostles the disciples uh, said what must I do <laughs> like you know when a family got born again on that same day what must I do um, in order to receive this gift from heaven it is to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior you and your household and be baptized and that baptize uh, immersion uh, it's like when you drink a cup of coffee or a, you've got a tea and you take a biscuit and you immerse it you you put it into the tea or into the coffee you have to dip it in so that is what that baptizo means it's to be dipped so to be dipped in God's ocean of love to be dipped in the obedience to Christ to be dipped into the purpose and the mission that he has given me to be dipped into um, the aspect of marriage in agreement so it is so much more um, where you have to submit yourself and we have to submit ourselves to the mighty hand of God we have to submit to his love and his grace and his mercy and uh, follow in obedience through to say I immerse myself into the person of Jesus Christ uh, because a seed cannot just lie on top of the ground a seed that needs to be sown needs to be put into the ground to die and that is a symbolism of how I die to myself when I go under into the water being dipped into the water and coming out as a new person so I'm laying down my old life of singleness and I rise up um, in, in, in a new uh, relationship called um, marriage where you have to serve and love your uh, your 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 partner. It it is true, but you know, before you can make that decision to get baptized, it is going to go along with sacrificing certain aspects of your life. Mm. You cannot think that you're going to be a pimp or a whatever, and you're going to now get baptized and you go on without, you know, to, to take giving it a second thought, continue with your old ways. It's a very definite decision of not continuing with your old ways that is not line in line with the will, word of God and with the will of God. The word of God is the will of God. So we also can't get away from the fact that we need to pray and we have to spend time in the word because we how are we going to know God's will if we don't spend time in the word? And then also we have to fellowship with, with fellow believers. So it's very hard to with that onslaught that's going to come our way, especially when you get baptized, because then the devil is going to come even more for you than what was the case before. I want you to walk into no. the obedience of God. No, and so he's going to come for you even more so after getting baptized. So we have to be prepared. We have to know what it is we're going to give up. We have to know what are the things that we have to work on when we we are looking at this beautiful verse here um, in... Um, Galatians 3, 26, 27. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ has clothed yourself with Christ. I mean, so what this says is the moment you, when you lead that old life and you get baptized, you are now clothed in Christ. So, I mean, when you're looking at the life of Jesus, um, you said he's gentle, but he also stood up for what was right. He was not soft. I mean, when the people were at the temple selling this stuff, he was there was no doubt about that he was not happy with the people that were there. And he said that this is not how it's supposed to be. And um, so we also have to understand that we have to stand up for what is right. We have to stand up for what is just. We have to, when a person is making the wrong choices in love, help them so they can help help them make better choices. Um, so yeah, and then also 1 Peter 3.21 says, And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience 
towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So when do you have a clear conscience? Is when you know that daily you are doing the best that you can to live as close in the image of Jesus Christ as you possibly can. So it's really, the, the choice of being baptized is it's a very important one. It's almost, it's not almost, it's also like when you take communion. The Bible is very clear that you, you eat and drink um, um, uh, um, condemnation over yourself if you use those elements and you, you don't forgive or you don't really you don't believe in Jesus Christ. You can't do those kind of things. There are consequences for those type of actions. And it's the same with baptism. It is a very serious decision that you need to make. And you know, it, it can be difficult for a couple if the one partner still wants to party and they want to still drink and they still want to hang out with their bad friends and go to bad places and bars and whatever. And the other person wants to um you know, live a life right in the, uh, with a clear conscience in God's eyes, and they're not on the same level there. So then, you know, it, it that is where prayer is important, because we have to understand that this is a spiritual warfare, that the devil will try and destroy the family. He, The devil is happy when and the family is suffering, the children are suffering, they're not going to church, they're not reading their Bible, they're not praying or doing any of these things. So it's always going to try and hinder this whole process where we really get to a point. First, lay down what is holding us back from being baptized. Secondly, getting baptized. And then thirdly, living a life that is actually pleasing to God. So, um, so yeah, it is, it is important. And also when it comes to our children, you know, we have to make, we are not responsible for our children. We are accountable for our children. And that is why when we also go the route of a baby, um, baby dedication, that we also realize that we need to teach our children. We're not doing it for ourselves. We're doing it for those little children that we are praying and uh, a blessing and protection over our children against the small g of this world. So they can be protected from whatever is going to go on with them and around them so that so that they can also get to know um, God and Jesus from a very young age. So we as a couple, first and foremost, um, ourselves to have a clear conscience before God. We study the word and we see and we look at what he says about baptism, um, to be baptized into him as a person so that we can reflect that life in the image of God and then coming to our children <clears throat> like you read that scripture now it's getting back to true life uh, the way the truth which is God's word that uh, it's important that that baby needs to um, also grow up in the obedience of Christ in the fear of God and that is the responsibility of the parents so it's as we as a couple, me as the husband and you as the wife take the responsibility to say, I'm following through in obedience to Christ. We need to bring our children to God and we need to dedicate them to Him to say, Lord, we make this promise that we will bring up our children in the fear of God. Show them the truth, the way and the life. So we have to bring them publicly also, like baptism is a public display, a public um, arena where you come in and say, listen people, this is my decision today. We bring our children, say family, friends, congregation, our faith community, here we are as father and mother of this baby or babies. And we bring them to God to say, we make this promise we will show them the way as we are laying down our lives also for God and for them that they will see the love that we operate in and function in. Definitely. And, and, and very last topic, part of baptism that's incredibly important is that Jesus left the earth so that we can receive the Holy Spirit. And I don't know about you, but life is very difficult without the Holy Spirit because Jesus seemed... The Holy Spirit as our helper, as our comforter, and being there for us as Christians. 
And it's so interesting, also Acts 2 verse 38, where Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So when you get baptized, it's at that point that you receive the Holy Spirit in your heart. And that is why it is so incredibly important that we take this step in being baptized, because we need the Holy Spirit. We need this Holy Spirit to help us in so many areas in our lives where we really feel down and out, where we feel like we are on this journey alone and we need um, wisdom and encouragement and just those words that, that just propels us to keep on going so that we can um, run this race and keep on running this race and not grow weary. Yeah, we need uh, that fuel in our lives like the vehicles need fuel and that is the fuel the power of holy spirit that's enabling us empowering us in in order to go through everything in life the persecutions the suffering uh, the trouble that jesus is talking about in this earth because the enemy is out to kill steal and destroy relationships and marriages so therefore we have to follow through in the power of Holy Spirit. We can't do it on our own <laughs> because we will definitely fail. Um, it's easy then to quit. It's easy then to pull out, but to say that through Him and in Him and to Him we were made, but we need the fire of Holy Spirit. So it is His empowerment, the endowment of His power in order to say, Lord, we rely on You. Um, as we lay down our lives to You, and to our partner, we lay down uh, our lives as well um, to say, not uh, the me, myself, and I anymore, but it's you in and through me. And that can only happen by the power of his spirit. So that's why it's important that like, the disciples waited on uh, the Holy Spirit in Jerusalem. It's to receive him in his fullness, to receive his power, to say, Lord, we want to do this through you um, and to you and for you. Um, yes, and then Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. And this is Jesus himself saying that, John 3 verse 5. So your baptism is incredibly important. We have to see where we are in terms of that if we have been baptized is what does our lives look like now and if we want to be baptized is what are those things that we need to lie down in front of jesus feet so that we can get free from those bondages so that we can live a life truly free and knowing jesus and having a personal relationship with him yeah what a wonderful way to say that we need to be obedient we need to be baptized uh, because Jesus showed us the way. And then secondly, also to receive the baptism of his Holy Spirit um, and uh, in the Holy Spirit and in fire, in his power, that endowment. So uh, go and study, take, take your Bibles when you go to your church, uh, wherever you are as a married couple, um, haven't yet followed through in that study that word those that have done like you rightfully say my wife it's important to say that let's go through that again and again and and revisit that we when we were baptized and also baptized received the baptism of the holy spirit that we can walk in that power we do have um, his empowerment inside of us to follow through in this life and and finish strong Yes, we already have the victory. We don't have to get the victory. We already have the victory in Jesus Christ. Yes, we we walk in what he has done already. It yes. is finished. It has been done. So we encourage you to look at that word baptism, look at that aspect, look at that life um, of that baptism. So let's pray together. Father, thank you so much today that we can pray together as a couple and as couples, wherever we are, most probably on the road or wherever, and tonight when we get back together again, um, we can just pray together and trust you and uh, be obedient to what your word says. So we thank you so much for 
for the aspects uh, and part of our lives, the baptism um, in you as a person, uh, to say we lay down our lives for you and we lay down our lives for our partners. Thank you so much, Father, that you help us to study this, to work hard at this uh, in self-control um, in order to bring glory and honor to you. We thank you so much for children that's in the houses, in the families, um, that we can bring them to you and that they can be dedicated to you and that we will be responsible as parents to bring them up in the fear of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's just have a wonderful week. I hope this was helpful to you. And then we'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Bye-bye, Bye. everybody. God bless. The radio station you can't live without. This is your radio. This is South Coast Radio.